Well, good morning, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for his grace already. We're grateful to be alive. And there's two words God gave us as a church, if you know them. Shout them out with me. Come on, everybody. Hope and healing. Hope for tomorrow and healing from our yesterday. It's all found in Jesus. We're Jesus people. And even if you're not a Jesus person yet, listen, you're still welcome here. I think it's important to have a place to inspect the claims of Christ. And we want to help you no matter where you are in your spiritual journey. We're just glad you're here today. So let's clap our hands for all of our guests today. Love you, love you, love you. All right, grab your phone out, get some notes, take pictures of these things, um, because you won't remember everything that you hear, but here's a couple of updates that's going on this month, all right? October has been packed, and let me just tell you, last first Wednesday service was amazing. So much, so much energy in the room, so much excitement for the things of God, and I just want to say, First Wednesdays are something that should be on your calendar. But we're also, here's a newsflash, not on this announcement uh, board, but our prayer gatherings that are normally Thursdays, we're moving them to Wednesdays, all right? So starting this Wednesday night, we have a prayer meeting at 7.30, lasts for about 45 minutes or so, and it really has been the backbone of our church. So if you want to pray or learn how to pray, this is the place to do that. And then we have Noble. This is our women's gathering. Any women in the house? <clears throat> That's this Friday, like this Friday. And there's only, I think, a couple hundred spots left. Uh, go to this website right now. Register. Call your friends, ladies, and tell them, come with me. And it's going to be a power pack night just for women and it's going to be incredible for you to learn how to navigate this next season. Diana is going to preach a word. She has some friends coming in. Worship is going to be powerful. And then we have a new series starting next Sunday called Mind Games, okay? This is the best series to bring your friends to because how many, how many have a friend that's struggling with depression? How many of us have struggled with depression? Like we all do, and it's on mental health. You don't want to miss this. This is a critical, critical series. I did it two years ago. We're redoing it because it was so popular, and now I think with everything going on, it's so necessary to help navigate where we are. So that's happening next weekend. And then young people, sixth grade to 12th grade, we got an encounter night. They meet it. Hey, listen, they meet every Sunday night, but this is like a special conference like one nighter, October the 24th. So get your kids here. It's going to be incredible. And um, I think that today, oh, by the way, we, we, first Wednesday, we celebrated the one year anniversary of Don't Quit in the Dip, the book I wrote last year. <laughs> crazy. Just crazy. So I'll be, we don't do this all the time, but I will, you can pick up a book if you'd like to purchase one in the lobby. Uh, I'll, I'd love to sign it for you in the lobby right after service. I'll be out there, I'll sign some books. Really, I just want to meet you. And then we have some church merch uh, for the book and also for the church. How many love your church? All right, I'm going to give one of these out. This is a 2XL. You can trade it for a different size or color if you want to. And where are we going with it? Where are we going? Who wants it? Who wants it? Oh, here we go. Watch this interception. Oh, and it's a fumble. They got it. All right, all the proceeds of these shirts go to feeding families for Thanksgiving. So you're going to get a shirt, but also you're investing in families too. We feed hundreds of people for Thanksgiving. It's coming up. And uh, just thinking about turkey makes me happy. So you can get all that stuff in the lobby, all right? All right. How many are ready for the word? Can we first of all thank and welcome, watch this, in our growth track step one, that's our membership class, starts the first of every month, last Sunday, 104 people joined the church. Come on, clap your hands and welcome them. That's incredible. And step two is today, by the way, you can jump in next week, I'm sorry, next month, the beginning of next month, and go through the class. It's a reoccurring class to help you where you are. Okay, part three of I love my church. Do you love your church? Yeah. I love you. This church loves you. Jesus loves you. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. Now, many guys in here are car guys, and you just love cars. Well, my Uncle Rest, who's watching this morning in Palm Springs area, and my Aunt Carla, love you, um, he has a 1955 Chevy. It is clean. It's been totally restored. It's gorgeous. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever taken some time and actually walked through a junkyard yourself? 
Some people can walk through a junkyard and see no value. All you see is junk, hence the name junkyard. Now, when you walk through, you see all these cars that people have given up on. You see all these cars that people have thrown away and see no value. Why? Because they're broken and inoperable. But there are some people with the unique ability to walk through a junkyard and look at all these cars that people have discarded and see potential. They walk over and they will pay for the cars that have been forgotten, the cars that have been dumped in a junkyard. They take it home and start what they call the restoration process. And when they are finished with the restoration process, they have something that makes heads turn. It is remarkable. It is a total transformation of this car. How many of you know I'm talking about and know where I'm going with this? Come on, everybody. All of us know what it feels like in life to feel discarded. We all know what it feels like to feel broken. And I want to show you some stories of whom Jesus Christ has stepped into their life and changed them completely. That's what this series, I Love My Church, is all about. Now, this is an important note. I want everybody to know the impact you're having locally, nationally, and around the globe as we're reaching people. And thank you, everybody who tithes. That's all of us who give our first 10% that we earn to God. It's what he laid out in the Word of God. It's a trust issue. I know it's difficult to try and believe, but man, we have been doing it since, I've been working since I was in sixth grade, giving God first 10% every single paycheck. God has blessed us, but it's, it's showing God you're first. But it's also an investment into the lives of people. Thank you for our legacy team. The legacy team is everybody who gives above the tithe. That's the offering section. And you're like, how do I get on that? Hey, just give above the tithe. And, and let us know if you want to participate and extend the vision and make it move faster to reach more people. But thank you for every small group leader. Thank you for all of the dream teamers. You make this possible. Now, here's an important note. Listen to me. We don't just go to church. We are the church. Y'all going to have to help me preach a little bit better than that this morning. I say, we don't just go to church. We are the church. And not in some arrogant, prideful way. I know it just hit my chest. That was more like, mm. but, I, but it's like this, we're on a mission, guys. This isn't a vacation. Times are short. People are desperate. The word of God needs to be poured out to the world. They need to know about the grace of Jesus Christ. We're on a mission. We're not some, some, like, like some cruise line. This is a war. We're an army. And we have re-enlisted for battle to say, God, sign me up because we're going we're gonna to snatch some lives from the fire and let them know about the hope that's in Jesus Christ. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. Say ekklesia. Okay, some people are like, you know what? I'm the church. You're right. I'm the church. I don't need church because I am the church. Well, you are the church, correct, but ecclesia literally means the assembly of the church. You can't assemble yourself. So one person is not the church. You are the church, but when we come together, we are the church. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. See all the people. <laughs> Remember that? You never. Some of you are like, I've never heard of that. It's something I learned as a kid. I don't know where that came out. Come on, say we are the church. Say we are the church. Well, what does that mean? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. But Jesus was so serious about the church. To reach the world, the church is God's idea. This was not man's idea. And listen to me. To reach the world, there is no plan B. The church is plan A. Jesus goes on to say, or through the pen of Paul, Christ is the head of the church. It's his body. And for repetition's sake, we've said this every week, because I'm trying to teach you guys something. There's, there's this deconstruction of church around America right now where it's just like, you know what, let's just gather and let's just philosophize and let's just think and critical think and not, not gather. Like, what? That doesn't change the world. A church on fire, a church mobilized changes the world. 
Christ is the head, the church is his body. Say it out loud with me, everybody. Christ is the head, the church is his body. Say it again. Christ is the head, the church is his body. Okay, listen, if Christ is the head and the church is his body, you can't decapitate Jesus. We can't be in this season like, I want Jesus, but I'm leaving the church. And I don't just mean our church. I'm talking about the capital C church of Jesus around the world. We can't decapitate. If Jesus birthed the church, turned around and laid down his life for the church, how many know the church is probably pretty important to Jesus? And what is important to him ought to be important to us. He wanted a place where we could do life together. He, he, he instituted the church so that we can run the same direction together as his body. Problem is, he has an anemic body in many places of the world. He has a body that refuses to function in many parts of the world. And in many parts, there's a paralysis that is set in. And the church is not l- functioning at the level that the body of Christ ought to be functioning at. Jesus is the head. The church is his body. Why do we love the church? Because Jesus is the head. The church is his body. He, listen, this is, this is a, cre- a critical statement. <clears throat> it came out many years ago. This is a statement that was utilized in churches all over, that the local church is the hope of the world. But it's not just the church. It is the local church. We added a word, mobilized. That's the hope of the world. Because a church sitting on a corner does nothing for the world unless it is mobilized. Unless the people are praying, unless the people are giving, unless the people are serving, unless the people are being nice and kind and reaching people with the grace of God, that church isn't making a difference. Not every church is making a difference. There are seasons where I don't make a difference all the time. We, 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 this series is like, let's come back to Jesus. Let's come back to fall in love with his bride, the church, and know that, man, when we're mobilized, we can be the hope of the world because Jesus Christ uses his church. He works through his church. Can I hear a good amen? amen. <clears throat> Ephesians, Paul is writing his intent, God's intent, was that now through the church, say through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. Okay, listen, if the church is not functioning and disseminating the wisdom of God, how will the world know? Are y'all catching this? That's why the church is so vitally important. It's, it's through the church. God has set this up that his manifold wisdom would be made known through his church. And if the church is not being the church, how will the world know? And I ask this question a lot. Why do you go to church? Some people are like, well, I was dragged here. You know, why, why do you go to church? Some people think, well, I come for the worship, I come for the preaching. That's great. Uh, I also would agree that corporate worship and corporate hearing of the word of God is much better than me just listening in my headphones. It's much better to be in the room. I get that. But you can hear preaching and worship Jesus alone. The only thing you can't do alone is love and serve people. So if that's the case, what would happen to all the people? I want you to sit back for a second. We're going to show you some stories of lives that have been changed right here at the church. We're going to laugh a little bit. We're going to cry a little bit. But because of your investment, lives have been changed. Take a look. Anybody here? Nope.
Come on in, guys. How are you? We're good. How are, How are you? Oh. Thank you. Oh man, thanks for doing this, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Come on in. Come on in. Grab a thank seat. You. Lejean and Sally, thank you so much for taking some time to sit down with me. It means the world. And um, every year we start talking about testimonies and there's so many stories. Like we could do this series forever because the power of the story is so incredibly remarkable and it helps other people. And that's really why we're doing this today. So thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. I want to start with where you were before the church. Where were you in life? What was going on? Take us back a little bit with that. I had been abused by a, a neighbor at eight years old. Okay? So my view of a relationship was kind of uh, tarnished at that point. So when I met um, my future wife, uh, I didn't know how to express to her um, what had been done to me, yeah. right? Um, we went on for years and years, and um, I, did, I, never, I never told her. Her growing up with a, um, a father that mentally and physically abused her, so her view of, of, of what a man was, was different from, from mine. And I began to portray how she grew up. Um, we were broken. Um, we were living in the same house. We weren't talking. All the time we tried to talk, um, it, was, it was an argument. Every day I cried, every day I drank, and every day I smoked a cigarette. And um, I was just broken. We were broken. As, as a married couple, we were broken. And um, I, was, I was done. I was ready for divorce. Wow. Yeah. Then Reggie came into her store, um, and he kept coming into her store to invite her. And she decided to come. The first day I walked in, I, I couldn't walk in by myself. I knew a friend that came here. And I called her up and reached out to her and said, hey, can, can I come to church with you? And you said something, and it stuck with me. And you said, um, if you're questioning um, why you're here, you're here because you're meant to be here. Wow. And my friend nudged me. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm, this is where I'm supposed to be. And um, every week I came, never missed a day. And every week, I would ask John, would you like to come to church? And he ignored me, and just keep going. And every Sunday, I'd come here, and I'd just blow my eyes out. I was still into my pride. I was so far into my pride that I was like, she would invite me, and I wouldn't come. Mm -hmm. And this happened for six months. Wow. One Sunday, I asked him, I said, would you like to come to church? And he said, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to come. Hmm. I couldn't put my clothes on fast enough. Yeah. We walked in hand in hand, <laughs> and we never looked back. It was the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Um, we walked in the doors uh, together. We went to Grove Track together. We started going to uh, Rika and um, Ruben Small Group started connecting with people. Um, and then they did a, a Freedom Small Group. And we joined that. We, we just, we haven't looked back since. Like you never know who's one invitation away. Absolutely. They might tell you no 50 times, but on the 51st time. I told you about a girl who was planning on ending her life at a church I was speaking to, and she said, now I know I can't, um, I, need to, I need Jesus, I need this church, I need it all. And I said, how long have you been coming? She said, my first day. I said, who invited you? And her friend comes walking up, and she says, she did. She's been inviting me since 2012. And I thought to myself, <laughs> how many no's did she get? But oh. she didn't stop inviting. 
Absolutely. How grateful are you that Sally didn't stop inviting you? I am so grateful. Um, our marriage was restored. Our two youngest sons got saved here. Our grandson got saved here at Kids Con. So it's just been a blessing. And uh, God is continuing to use us in, 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 in ways that uh, just simply are uh, amazing. Um, I don't know why he picked us, but he did. How important are small groups? So important. Very important. So important. I I have brothers and sisters now that love on us, Yes. that pray for us. Reggie planted the seed, and he just watched it grow. And I love that he came in to my job knowing that I, I needed it. He was just being a disciple of Jesus, just doing his work. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me where you are now compared to where you were before you started coming to church. Oh my gosh, the joy. It, it, I have joy in my heart. I would never want to go back to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, what God has done for us is simply amazing. Um, he saved us. He's expanded our tent to the point where I mean, we care coach, we're a prayer team. We serve everywhere. I mean, we're, we're just, we're all over the map, Pastor. I mean, we're everywhere. So it's just been a blessing. He gets all the glory. Yes, he does. You have a spirit of joy that exudes the room, and I'm just so thankful that, um, that I have it. I'm so glad that we went through the trials and the tribulations to get to where we're at now the joy that the Lord has given us. Um, we have the Lord as, as the center of our, of our relationship. Yes. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it, honey. I'm glad that we went through what we went through in order to get to where we're at now. Amen. And we didn't, we didn't quit. Amen. We didn't quit. I love you. Love you too. We love our, um, brothers and sisters in our church. We love our pastors. We just, we love our church. Well, your church loves you. Thank you. We're grateful for you. We're so grateful that you, you planted this church. You've changed our lives and it's going to be generations because we pass it on to our kids. Yeah. Just don't quit. <laughs> don't quit. Amen. We're, We're the, the Williams, Williams and, and we, we love, love our, our church. church. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know why we do what we do, there it is right there. It's that. It's for you. It's for those who aren't here yet. And Jesus does a lot through his church. Listen to me. That, here's one of them. We're a place of restoration. This is a restoration house. We, we help people be restored back in right relationship with Jesus, because he did that in us. And anything he gives to us, we want to give away. All right, here's the verse. Look at this. This is a great one. First Peter. And after you have suffered a little while. Anybody been through some suffering? Yes. The God of all grace, whew, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, here's your four-point point sermon right here, restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Our God, Jesus Christ himself, not, not an angel, himself, not Mary, Jesus himself will restore you. He'll confirm that you are called. He will strengthen you on the inside and he will establish you as a child of God. Anybody think that's a great verse to cling to in this time? And Peter's giving believers in this season a different perspective, a wider perspective of who God is. And he's like, guys, guys, if you have suffered a little while, that's nothing in comparison to eternity. And, G and Peter was one of the guys who followed Jesus like close face to face for three years. And he's letting everybody know that restoration can only be found in Jesus. He knows from personal experience. And then David, come on, David 
He comes along and echoes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. This is the most famous chapter in the entire Bible. He leads me beside still waters and read this out, everybody, and claim it for yourself. He restores my soul. Some of you need your soul restored. The Lord does that. And if you're here today and you need some restoration, you're in a good place because God specializes in restoration. But John and Sally, many of you know them as John and Sally, they said this, we were broken. Like how many times did you say it? We were broken, we were broken, we are broken. Can anybody relate to that right now? They felt so broken and they're living in the same house, but they felt no life. And then they were abused, both of them. The devil tried to take them out at a young age. And now they're starting to feel like that car in the junkyard. They're, they're forgotten. They're, a, they're abandoned. They're le- left to themselves or cast aside. They're broken. Until somebody invited them to church. And everything changed. See, what they didn't realize was that while they were sitting in despair, there was a man named Jesus who was walking through their despair and said, oh, no, 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 you think this is the end? It ain't the end. Like, I'm going to step into your life because I see potential. God saw the hurt. He saw the brokenness. He saw the pain, but he also saw potential. And then look at this. Jesus says, I'll pay what is necessary for their lives. For God so loved the world that he gave. Why do we give so much? Because we want to be like him. So that he gave his only son. Listen, his only son, he gave his best. It wasn't like he said, well, I got seven sons, take the second one. I'll give you my only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This is found in Jesus. And the devil tried to put them in the junkyard of despair. Jesus is like, oh no, you're coming out of the junkyard of despair because I want to I start the restoration process in you. And did you hear their story? Now their marriage has been healed. They're free from their past. Come on, their kids are saved. Their grandkids are saved. They're building a new legacy for future generations. And God did all this through their church. This is a place of restoration. Listen to me, everybody. You need to know this. You never know who's one invitation away. You never know. Like Reggie invited Sally, I don't know how many times. Sally started coming and for six months kept inviting LeJean, her husband. I don't know how many times she invited him and I don't know how many times he said no. But one day, he woke up and was like, I'll go to church. And she was like, I couldn't put my clothes on fast enough. Oh, is this for real? What would have happened if Reggie stopped after the first invite? What if Sally would have stopped after the first invite? Aren't you glad they didn't stop inviting? Come on, everybody. Be the invitation. Don't just come to church. Be the church. Bring people to God. And if you're new here, you're here because you belong here. Like God wants you to experience hope. He wants you to experience restoration. He wants you to experience the the healing that he has that's found in him. And if God can do it for that couple, look, look, look. He can do it for you. I know you can't see it right now, but we have, we'll have faith for you today. He can do it for you today. Do you love your church? <clears throat> okay, look. The church is also a place to be planted. To be planted. We have some people that come from other churches like, man, I'm going to several churches. Pick one. You can't be planted in a couple of them. Like, let your roots go down deep. If it's not here, that's fine with us. There's a lot of great churches in the Bay Area. There's a lot of them. Pick one and let your roots go down deep because here's what the Bible says. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. What happened in 2020 was a lot of uprooting and people still expect to flourish and yet they are not planted. But those who are planted in the house, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Say planted. You know, it's interesting, I did a little study a few years ago on the redwood trees up north north of the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, where the Planet of the Apes was filmed. Okay, those redwood trees, have you ever been? You gotta go. People come from all over the world to come, and you live here. Like, go, take a day, 
Look at the redwoods. You're just standing there like, this is amazing. They're massive. But they're not just massive on top. They have deep roots. Yeah. Watch this. They don't just have deep roots. Their roots interlock with the other roots from other trees, so they're even stronger. I don't think they grow like this, but <laughs> it's like the roots are so deep. <laughs> But it is fascinating because when the wind comes and when the storms blow, they are immovable. Compare that to the tumbleweed. Why is it the tumbleweed is always rolling down the street in an old western? How many have ever seen that? You always hear the whistle and then the guitar. Okay, you, let's have a little fun. All right, I'll do the whistle. You guys do the wow, wow, wow. Okay, ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay. <laughs> you guys sound like a bunch of sick cats. <laughs> but you know this to be true. In every old western, there's two guys standing off a dusty road, and all of a sudden, that noise comes. <laughs> and then the tumbleweed, tumbleweed, tumbleweed come. You never see a redwood tree just rolling down the road. A redwood tree stays planted. Redwood tree is strong. Redwood tree has roots that go down and latch on to the other roots from other trees. Tumbleweed, real big on top, itty bitty roots. It is sad. We even expect them to tumble. It's in their name. What's this called? I don't know, tumbleweed. Why? It's always tumbling. It goes wherever the wind takes them. Can I tell you? God doesn't want you to be some tumbleweed believer just rolling down the road. Like by every wind of doctrine, every wind of gossip, you just over here, over there. No, stay planted in the house of God and you will flourish. You can take that to the bank because God said it. <laughs> Somebody say stay planted. I just got dizzy right there. Let me say it another way. Okay, we all have our phones, and we love our phones. We're always on our phones. But the problem is the battery dies too soon on these phones. My battery's dead by like noon. And I wish I could say the whole thing is because I've just been in the one-year Bible. Read my Bible till noon. But it's not always. Sometimes it's Instagram and Facebook and whatever else. I was on a plane one time. I had 15%. Now, when you get below 20% on a phone, you start having heart palpitations. Whew, I, gotta find, I gotta find a charge. And I looked under the seat and there was an outlet. I was like, look at God. My ram in the bush. Won't he do it? You know, I just took my phone plug, plugged it in, hour flight, real quick flight, plugged it in, and then we landed. I was expecting to be fully charged. I was now at 10%. Started with 15, now I'm at 10%. I was like, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The plug looked like it was plugged in, but it wasn't plugged in all the way. After further investigation, I realized that it wasn't totally plugged in. It had the appearance of being connected, but being around the source is a whole lot different than being plugged into the source. You can be around church. That's a whole lot different than being plugged in and connected to church. Come on, let your roots go deep, be planted in the house of God, and you will flourish in the courts of our God. <clears throat> in the same way, we've got to be connected. And um, I think that God's establishing some people in this season, because those who were a little shaky last season have realized, I don't want to be at the tumbleweed just rolling down. Like, we all know people we thought were solid, and we, they were real big on top. And we were like, oh, those roots were really, really shallow. Not you. Your roots go deep. Here's one more story. Take a look at this. Regina, thank you so much for taking time to share your story. Uh, you never know what people have been through just by meeting them. And this is actually my first time meeting you on a Zoom. And our team was telling me about how incredible you are and your story is so powerful. They're like, we have to interview Regina. So thanks for uh, taking this time with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, I'd like to start off by asking you a couple questions. Number one, uh, can you go back and talk to me about where you were 
before Fellowship Church? A majority of my story starts with, I wasn't a follower before this time and didn't have the didn't have faith. And I was married before, asked for a divorce in 2018. And once I um, had that divorce granted, I moved out to Florida. I left my children behind and that was a really hard decision for me. They stayed with their father and their new stepmom. And I decided to pursue a relationship out in Florida and kind of restart my life. Um, I had been married for, or with my partner for 19 years at that point. I quickly found out though that he was a toxic person. Is, uh, that's the nicest way to put it, emotionally and verbally abusive. Was hearing very hurtful things on a weekly basis and just became the best way to describe it, a shell of who I was. I didn't really want to live anymore. Huh. I didn't feel good enough. I let him know, you know, I try, try to explain it, you know, and was not met fairly on that side. And I just remember one point sitting on the corner of my bed, just sobbing, like crying and rocking and wanting my mom and dad and hopeless, <laughs> really, really hopeless. And trying to get my partner to truly understand like what, how it was breaking me as a person and how, you know, I wanted it to be better. I had all these hopes for us. I had hoped to get married and, and to have this beautiful life together. And all I needed him to do was stop treating me the way he was in those moments. And I'm in a place where I'm self-harming and I'm thinking about leaving my children in this world with nobody. Mm -hmm. And it was a very dark place. And so May of 2020, I broke off the relationship. And in July of 2020, I moved to Idaho where my best friend lives. But I was, I was very broken, like, you know, crying, gosh, 18 to 20 hours a day. It was not wanting to live. It really was for me. It was feeling like, you know what, I'm better off not being here. I love, I have a lot of regret of leaving my children and making that choice. So it's like, you know, they can have their dad and I've done so much hurt and well, are they ever gonna forgive me? Is my son ever gonna wanna live with me again? You know, does he, is he ever gonna look at me the same? Cause in that moment, I just felt like I'd done all the wrong things in my life. So that was rock bottom was just kind of letting all of those, letting the enemy essentially just tell me that I wasn't good enough. I um, had met a friend back in 2011 who is currently a fellowship uh, member. And back then, you know, she tried to get me to go to church and I told her, I was like, nah, it's not really my thing. I just had a day, I think it was, oh man, it must've been mid August of last year. And I called her and said, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm, 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 hitting, I'm hitting rock bottom, like I'm, I'm done. She directed me to fellowship church online. She goes, hey, you know, they're live streaming because of COVID check it out and I did and I she had a bible on my step, doorstep within about three days wow. <laughs> she, yeah she was so excited that I finally called her you know she was I think she'd been waiting for about eight years for me to make that call to her and I watched my first sermon online and you were um, promoting don't quit in the dip and it was like the best way I can describe it is you were sorry a little emotional sure you were talking to me and you were telling me not to give up that it was going to be okay hmm. and so i got the book and i read it and decided to join a small group immediately and was so blessed to be in kelly murdoch's group what an amazing woman and and i think it was september actually september 6 2020 i i prayed the prayer with you wow. and um, from my my couch in my living room and joined that small group and she just slowly brought me out of my shell of talking about it and sharing my story. Found that there's a lot of people in similar places that I've been. They've been in, you know, hard relationships or marriages and that have not worked out. And I just was able to talk it out. I slowly started feeling the hope side of it. Like I could see that there was good things to come. There's good people out there that are rallying for me. And all of my small groups. I've done many, many, many small groups since then. I mean, I, I, I love small groups, actually. I've done um, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. I've wow. done Well-Watered Woman. I've done Freedom. And Freedom was my true enlightening moment of worshiping and what it means to really give it over to him and to release, to release all the negativity in your life and the things that you regret. There's a lot of regrets, obviously, that I, I've shared. And giving those to him and knowing that he, is, that he loves me no matter what. So you went through the Freedom Small Group online in Idaho. And mm -hmm. then I heard that you came 
down here to go to the Freedom Conference in person. Is that right? I did. Yeah, I came down in April and uh, did Freedom. They were just such a welcoming group. And I, I knew I needed to be in person and be in the house of God and to feel the energy and to feel his you know, hands on my shoulders. And I just, I just knew it had to be in person. And it was also grouped with the fact that baptisms were also the same weekend. So I flew down and, and came out for the conference. And it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. It was amazing to ha have everybody there, to be able to hug people and see them face to face and be surrounded with like-minded people, yeah. you know, and it, it's the warmth. And then to hear them cheering me on when I was being baptized was just, just amazing. My confidence is back. I really, um, through all the small groups that I've done and my time with the Lord, my confidence is back and I, I feel loved every day. I still have moments where the enemy tries to sneak in and but now I have a way to combat that. I have the Lord to stand by my side and I can turn to him and he can help me to squash those feelings, squash those, those thoughts. And it's something that I'm so grateful for. I am looking forward to reaching out with the dream team i'm going to try to um, help out remotely whether it be on the online services or maybe through 24-hour prayer line yeah. continue with small groups but my hope is by next semester to lead a small group oh wow one last question yeah. and this is a tough one okay if you could think for just a second where would you be without the church i probably wouldn't be here I'd be without my kids, you know, they wouldn't have a mom. And um, I would have given up to the demons <laughs> that were in my head. And I wouldn't be living this life and uh, being blessed in the way that I have with family and friends rallying besides me and the friendships that I'm making a fellowship. It, it would be a very, very different situation. And I would have, you know, hurt so many people in my life by allowing those moments to take over and those demons to run the choices I was making in my life. So hmm. fellowship had literally saved my life. Well, all glory to Jesus. And I'm thankful for the church that is his hands and feet extended to people that are hurting and broken because God gave us two words a long time ago, hope and healing. And I pray that over your life. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for sharing your story. My name is Regina Severdia, and I love my church. <laughs> I just heard that Regina has flown down today from Idaho to be here at church today. Can we clap our hands for her? Uh, look, look, look at me, look at me. This stuff never gets old. Never gets old. And I know that there are a lot of you who are hearing these stories and you feel like you are where they were. And as the world has tried to throw you away and break you down, you feel like you have no place to go, we are the church. And we say to the world, send us your broken. Send us your hurting. Send us those who feel like there's nothing yet to live for. We'll take them. We'll take every last one of them. We will walk through this, this area of despair and we see potential in you. We see healing before you can even see it. We know, because what God did in us. You need to know this is a place of restoration. It's a place to be planted. And then you need to know that you belong here. Where do you belong? And some of you are like, I just, I wish I knew where. This, this is where, this is where. You're no longer strangers to God. You're no longer foreigners to heaven. But you're members of God's very own, say it out loud, family and citizens of God's country. I love this part. You belong in God's household with every other Christian. This is where you belong. What's crazy to me is that a lot of people feel like they're trying to, trying to restart. Well, guess what? Do it here. This is a place to restart. I'm going to show you how. A couple verses, okay? A couple verses that say it's possible. 
This is a verse. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, God says, I'm doing a new thing. Shout new thing. <clears throat> now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Some of you are like, no, not yet. Well, he says, I'm making a way in the wilderness, and I'm making streams in the wasteland. You think that you're in a wilderness and in a dry place? God's like, that's okay. I'll bring the, I'll bring the refreshing to you. And Paul comes along in the New Testament and says, I don't consider myself to have made it. Like, none of us think that we have arrived. There's nobody here with a holier-than-thou mentality, okay? We all know we were desperate, we were sinners, and we need Jesus. But one thing I do, he's like, if I've learned anything, I got this down, forget what's behind me, and strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, say, forget the past. Come on, say, press forward. Regina said this from her own lips, I was far from God. She felt empty, felt hopeless. She's searching for meaning, and she's trying to restart her life, but the way she tried to restart her life was by moving geographically. And isn't it funny, when we feel like we need to restart, we feel like if we just move geographically, if we move cities, if we move jobs, if we move schools, then we will actually have fulfillment. But fulfillment doesn't come from more of something, it comes from more of someone. It doesn't come from another spot, it comes from Jesus. He's the only one who can give you a fresh start. He's the only one who can make you whole. She said this, I felt like a shell of who I was. I wonder, can anybody relate to that? Like you're living, but you feel hollow on the inside. And it got so bad. Listen to me. She wanted to end her life. She's not alone in that. There was a million suicides in 2020. And I looked up this, this week, looking at studying mental health for this next week's sermon on mind games. Watch this. A million people took their life. The amount of people who attempted is 20 times higher. You're telling me 19 million more people tried? Yeah. If that doesn't speak to the urgency of the church's need right now, I don't know what does. It is the church of Jesus Christ that will be light, that will be salt, that will bring people to Jesus and point them to Christ and say, you can have a fresh start here. She felt shame. She felt like she hit rock bottom. And then somebody invited her to Fellowship Church. <laughs> she said, oh, this is what she said. Oh, church isn't my thing. Isn't it funny how something that's not your thing becomes your thing? And now church is her thing. A friend had been inviting her for eight years long years, and she started watching online. Come on, let's give a shout out to everybody that's watching online today, our, our online family, we love you. She jumped into small group, flew down for the Freedom Conference, got baptized, now she's a new person, now she has hope. Are you guys hearing me? This woman would not be alive if it weren't, if it weren't for the church. Her kids wouldn't have a mom if it weren't for you in this church blows my mind away. Every single Sunday, there are lives weighing in the balance. There are no wasted services. Every service counts. Every week counts. Every day counts. And now this mom has been restored, and I think this is an amazing story of restoration. Listen to me. So many people, so many people are trying to restart their lives without God, and it's like, no, 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 they go over here, try, try this. No, 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 no. Oh, well, may, I know what it is. No, 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 no. You can't restart with a dead engine. You need Jesus to bring you to life. We'll show you how. We'll help you. But if you've, if you've, if you've been watching this the last three weeks, I hope that you have seen the repeated pattern. It's not just being around church. They took the steps that we offered them. They surrender your life to Jesus, go through our growth track. That's a three-week class, starts the beginning of every month on the other side of that wall. We'll help you. We help, we help you. We're not gonna force anybody, but we will make the pathway extremely clear. Go through growth track, get in a small group. Go like today to our website, shop for a group that matches your, your day and try a couple to get some friends going the same way as you and then get on the dream team. Like every one of these stories have been people who applied the principles we gave them and now their life has changed. You know why? Because it's the local church mobilized. That is the hope of the world. Right, right. I think it's funny. <laughs> 
all the pastors that are online and on social media, every week they're trying to go on and send a video trying to get people to come to church that Sunday. Have you seen them? We do the, and I do it too. We do these dumb videos. Guys, new series, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> We're shooting video. Guys, it's going to be me. I can hardly wait. All these videos just to try and convince somebody to go to church. They should never have to do that. You should never have to be coerced to come to church. Come on, everybody. That's mature believers know after all God has done for me, try keeping me away from the church. The Bible says in John 2, zeal for the house has consumed me. David said, I, I, I was happy. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let, let, let church not be optional. This is something that we are, not something we attend. <laughs> are y'all with me on this? Do you love Jesus? Do you love his church? All right, let me end with this, because some of you are where they were, and you're like, all right, Sean, well, what do I do? Let me help you. One verse today, all right? Repent. What's that mean? It means you turn around. It's not a bad word. Some of you are like, oh, he's preaching all harsh and mean. He told me to repent. Yeah, if you were going down a one way, I'd tell you, turn around. That's all we're doing. Like, turn around. You were going your way, turn to God. Give him the controls of your life. And then turn to God. Watch this, watch this. All of our sins can be wiped out. Even the stuff you don't think is possible. Look, 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 look. Even the stuff you don't think is possible to be wiped out. God's like, oh, it's not a surprise to him. He loves you. He already paid for our sin. You don't have to pay for it. He paid. He'll wipe it out. And here's the best part. Look, well, the sin, that's the best part. Here's the second best part. It's almost like, if you call right now, I'll throw this extra in for free. Look at me, look at me. And a time of refreshing will flood your soul. If we've ever needed a refreshing, it's right now. Hmm. Everything that God's done. You've only heard six stories over the last three weeks. There are thousands. But let's go make some more stories together. We won't make more stories by sitting. We, mo we make more stories by mobilizing. When the tithers tithe, when the givers give, when we pray, when we go through growth track, when we get in small groups, start doing relationship with people, our roots start interlocking with everybody else, you become stronger, you get on the dream team, start serving, you take it seriously, you're like, I'm not gonna just serve at church, I'm gonna serve in my job, my community, my school. You realize there's a mission. There's a mandate. We are the church. Can you say that with me? We are the church. Come on, say it again. We are the church. Say, God, we are your church. Would you bow your heads with me? This has been an incredible series. We honestly could do this series for a whole year and not exhaust the testimonies. But watch this, there's about to be some more testimonies made right now. People who think that they have been discarded and forgotten, <laughs> not here. Jesus is walking through these chairs and walking into your living room or wherever you're watching this and saying, oh, I see potential in you. I can heal you, I can forgive you. All he's waiting for is for you to surrender the controls of your life to him. Put your faith in Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a commitment prayer that you can pray right where you are. If this is you now, you say, Sean, I want to give my life to Jesus, or I was once close to God, but I've drifted, and I want to come back. All right, make it real simple. If that's you, you say, count me in that prayer when you pray it. On the count of three, lift your hand up and just say, I'm in. I'm giving my life to Christ. One, two, three. Be bold and lift it right up and just leave it up. Leave it up. Leave it up. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Lots of hands. Great, 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 great. Okay, put your hands down. 
I'll lead you in the prayer. We're all gonna pray it with you so nobody stands out because we're with you even in this. We're so excited for you because we know what's coming. Can you just say this? Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me first. Today I give you my life. Forgive me from my sin. Wash me clean. Bring a season of refreshing to my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I'm all yours. Now I wonder, can we take a moment and Christ is the head, the church is his body. Can we just maybe lift our hands on our lap like this as an attitude of surrender and say this to him? I make a fresh commitment to you and I make a fresh commitment to your church. Use me and all of my gifts to reach others with your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So proud of you. So proud of you. Everybody watching online, in this room. Now go tell somebody. Tell somebody that you gave your life to Jesus today, even if they don't understand. And go through the steps we say. Growth track, small groups, dream team. We're going to help you, all right? We'll help you. This is a journey. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But take your phone out and text this word right now, TFC, to 94000. 9-4-0-0. And many of you have not filled out the connection card in weeks. Can you do me a favor? <laughs> Can you go there and let us know you were here? It helps us and, and track everybody that needs to be tracked. And we're going to uh, see how we can help you better. And then prayer meeting again is moved to this Wednesday night. And then this is a, this is a, a day we don't spring on you. I like to plan things. Don't you like to plan Legacy offering. Now, we tithe every month, but this offering we take in December the 12th, we take it and then we, we give it away to five areas, and we'll let you know those. But every year, we've been doing this for years just to help more people uh, in missions and church planting and all these things. So just get this in your mind. Like, just be praying. God, what would you have us give during this season? And um, I want to throw that out there as well. All right. As we give today, I just want to say thank you. There are moments where when my girls were young, they had two words. When I asked them to share something, they would say this. They'd say this, no, mine. Ha have you ever heard those words before from your kids? Okay, well, what's crazy is that we grow up, and when God says, hey, I want the first 10%, show me on first, we go, no, mine. Like, um, it's crazy because our daughters a few months ago were writing their names on certain things in the pantry. And I was like, so in a joke, I wrote my name on everything. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you forgot, it, but, but the couch is mine, the fridge is mine, Cereal's my, like it's, it, this is all, I'm sharing with you. What are you talking about? Mine. Isn't it funny how we come to God and we try to tell God, like, you can have this, this, and this, but this, my bank account is mine, mine. He's like, have, have you forgotten? It all belongs to him. And when God calls us to tithe, when God calls us to give, to support, that things can further and we can reach more people, Let's not look at God and say, no, mine. Let's say, God, it's all yours. When my wife and I give, we know. Like, it, there's been some times where he, he has helped us and made us, like, I mean, you need to give this. And the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. Listen to me. Um, there have been times where I have not been cheerful. Come on, talk back to me, church. Like, there have been times where our last $500, we wrote a check, and it was like those zeros are going on for days. And I was just watering my seed with tears, you know, just like, this is a lot. And that was when, I remember, I'll never forget, that was when we wrote our first like $500 check. And um, it was a moment for us. It was a moment of trust. It was a moment of investment. But if you only give when you're cheerful, you're probably not giving much. There's something called a sacrifice. And, and my wife and I have learned to give till it hurts. But 
God is so faithful. He's so faithful. We, all we're doing is telling him, God, we trust you with the first 10%. Could you bless the rest of the 90? Because <laughs> my 90% with your blessing goes a whole lot longer and further than my 100% without your blessing. It's so funny how I've talked to people who make, they're like, they're, they're making really good money. And they're like, I don't even know where my money goes. Because the Bible says you're putting it into a purse with holes. <laughs> Put God first. Honor him first. Just tell him. It's a trust issue. Tell him you're first. So whatever God's telling you to do, we don't tell you what to give. We say pray. Ask God what to give and then do that. And you watch. You watch. So Lord, I pray a blessing over this offering now. There's three ways we can give here and we can give in the offering boxes. But Lord, we give this as worship to you. I pray that you'd help further this reach to reach people with Thanksgiving outreach with our Christmas mall, giving presents to kids. But, oh, Lord, we're not just doing this. We're attaching your name to it for transformational stories. We love you. We love you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.